Eric, can you do roll call, please? Yes. Jennifer Brogan? Here. Ellen Jimenez? Here. Cody Halfmoon? Michael Marquez? Here. Rubina Salas is excused. Jonathan Stone is excused. Jamie Towson? Here. Uh, I want to thank Trace and uh, Gary for updating this next part. As a reminder, if you're carrying a cell phone, computer, or other sound device, no longer two way radio, <laughs> we ask that you turn off to minimize disruption today. <laughs> is the vice mayor on? Oh. Yes. Vice Mayor Aslan, would you do you have anything to share with, with all of us? Good afternoon. I don't think you want my advice. <laughs> Commissioners, do you guys have anything to share with the group? Really? Okay. <laughs> Michael? Um, I think what's uh what's exciting. Okay. Beer week's coming. Beer, Beer week's, week's coming. coming. That's gonna be exciting. It's in February. February 15th. Ellen, an update. Really? Yeah, shocking. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've had a slight career change. I uh, have taken a new um, job and I am now at the Embassy Suites uh, here in Flagstaff on Milton Road. Nice. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. I'm on day four. <laughs> so be kind. Cody, do you have anything to share with the rest of the commission? Hello, commission. <laughs> Hello, can everyone see me and hear me okay? Yes. Hello. Um, no, nothing, nothing really to share. Just exciting um, investment committee meetings and planning for IPW. So. Lots of fun opportunities coming up. So thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, do we have anyone carrying it from the public? No, I don't see anybody. Um, OK, moving down to E, we need approval of November 16th, 2023 minutes. Anyone want, want, does anyone want to make a motion? So we approve those minutes. Michael, do I have a second? Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Michael, restaurant report. Oh, this NA project. Um, we are having to go out and get more data. Uh, right now, we do not have a statistically significant sample, uh, specifically from restaurant employees uh, and some of the restaurant guests. So. We're going to be resubmitting that. Uh, VP down at the uh, research center is going to help us get that out again. We might need some help from this commission to spread the word a little bit and uh, even maybe going as far as using one of our resources would be delightful, such as the Flagstaff local. So we are looking for more data. Um, this is much more difficult than I thought it was going to be to get folks. To give us their opinions. Interesting. Was there anything from our retreat when we had discussed creating, um, like we do with the festivals, a group for the restaurants? We do have a restaurant database. Yeah, but rem remember we kind of discussed like it was you know, the way Sabrina gets all of the festival yeah. books together mm -hmm. to get the restaurant books together mm -hmm. to see if that would help. Oh, yeah, I could talk about. Everything could discover flag staff and perhaps the one that's yes. um, like, yeah, I think there's opportunity. And, and I think that that too then led to some additional conversation and lubricant part of it where um, even we have a time circling the restaurant tours. Um, and, and then that's kind of like what we said, we would need your help too. So perhaps as a, as a team approach, um, we can trust the wider net. So we could do it. We typically do it once a year for other verticals. So we could do it once a year for a restaurant to say, hey, here's the general path that 
for taking and what ideas do you have? That's just a way to get everyone together for that. And then conversations can ensue all year long, obviously. But um, so if we did do that as a vertical, we talked about it briefly. What when is the best time for that? <laughs> Probably right, I would say right right now. right now is about is about as dead as it gets. OK. OK, for Flagstaff, right? Mm -hmm. So February. And, yeah, and we have we have our plan. And so we can we can put together a meeting pretty easily um, and then just see what happens, see what feedback we get, that kind of thing. So would February work, do you think? I would say yeah, earlier in February would be better to reach out, could reach out to the uh, economic team to have them keep us open. I know that back in December, we were going to keep it open through January. Uh, I talked to that. I'll grab, I'll grab Chef Mark. And, okay, so we'll do that. Yeah. And and two, um, with the less we talk, the less that we did an intercept working through NAU as well. Um, we collected data over the course of twelve months. Interesting. So yeah. that might be a a, a moment. I don't know. Uh, and, and twelve months was strategically selected, not only for uh, the statistically valid collection, but also because visitation differs throughout the year. So to get a pulse on who's coming, because that's also different month to month. Uh, what, what are they doing month to month? So there's a lot of reason, but maybe to make it feel better, it's, I would say for us, um, we've learned that the 12 month process yields good data. That's a good idea. Thanks, Michael. Uh, attractions report from Heather. Hello, everyone, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you all. Um, so hello again. Um, my name is Heather Craig. I'm the Marketing Operations Specialist at Lowell Observatory, and I apologize if I sound hoarse. I am coming down with whatever has been going around, so I apologize in advance for that. Um, so I have the attractions report for our local attractions kind of summing up 2023. Um, so for November and December, um, as you can see here um, for the trend in, for November and December, it was um, fairly decent for most of our attractions. Um, Flagstaff Extreme tends to drop off in December. Um, Lowell Observatory comparative to the past few years did quite well. This might have to do with um, the lower amounts of weather and snow that the um, that the area has been having. Um, and so here in the graph, we can see that as well. Arizona Snow Bowl, again, bouncing up in December as they um, always do with their opening of their winter skiing activities. Um, and then here we have the total visitation um, that doesn't include the Grand Canyon National Park. Um, 2023 is this blue line here and it is trending um, just up with uh, 2019 um, as well as 2022. This does not include the uh, Grand Canyon train visitors. So with those being added in, hopefully we'll be able to surpass um, our past numbers um, with those coming in. Um, and then here is the Grand Canyon National Park. Again, they haven't submitted their numbers for December. I check them vigilantly like every half hour. Um, and again, they had an upward trend in September and October, and then we're right on um, kind of right on the mark for their November numbers. Um, so, um, and then here is the temperature and snowfall and uh, precipitation charts. Um, again, this year we have seen a little bit less snowfall and rain in November and December as we have in the past years, as well as slightly warmer weather um, in 2023. So that could have um, a good impact on visitation for outdoor um, activities such as Lowell meteor crater. Um, so here's some upcoming in-person and online events. 
Um, Lowell Observatory will be hosting the iHeart Pluto Festival February 17th through 19th um, with the uh, town downtown pub crawl as well as the night of discovery um, at the Orpheum. Arizona Snowball is bringing back all of their wonderful winter activities um, and from January 19th to 20, February 23rd, um, Ski With Us Friday Afternoons is a really great way to take advantage of um, cheaper lift tickets, ski lessons, and rentals. Um, and that is all that I have for you guys this month. Um, and if anyone has any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Commissioners, you have questions for Heather? Um, I'm curious about, uh, is, are we just in, are we kind of looking at, I saw 2019 to 2023 in June specifically in that ballpark. It looked like we were down, is that about 100,000 visitors? So what are you, June 19 versus June 2023? 20, okay. Is that, is that kind of what we're still expecting in post-COVID recovery? And where are you yes. seeing that we were down from, from the chart there? Oh, I see. So, yeah. and that's visitors. You want to explain that so we understand the limitations are. Uh, is it this chart that we're looking at here? Versus the blue line below it. Yes. Uh, that. Yeah. So, um, what we're looking at here is we have the total visitor count from all of the different locations um, that I collect, but. Um, these November and December numbers currently right now, oh no, just uh, December, doesn't have the Grand Canyon train visitors because they have not posted those yet. Um, but if we look at 2019, we are very close to coming back up into trend with that and recovering from COVID. Yeah, because yeah, we're looking at June. I, I was just curious. So your question is right? yeah, yeah. yeah, so, you know, this is not going to be a complete picture, right? It's just a it's it's a picture with it's a snapshot and it's a picture with some parameters around it. So if we look at demand, the demand calculator for a traditional accommodation, again, just a picture. It's not the whole picture. They're showing for June um, demand was almost flat. They say it was down one percent. Okay, so not quite a hundred. That wouldn't be a hundred. This year compared to nineteen. Oh, 19. Well, that's true. I don't have nineteen. I'll have to go find it. I can find it real quick um, to tell you from a different perspective. Because this is not. If you use this as your only lens, you're not getting a full picture. Okay. Um, so yeah, to nineteen because you consider that to be just a normal year, right? Okay. So let's look at it real quick. Um, so demand for, for this, it's showing us that uh, demand was at 100 for the month, was at 119,000 room nights. And then if we go back and look at 19, uh, 2019, I have it right here. Uh, and again, this will just give you another perspective. There's no kind of no perfect science here. Yeah, so we'll just do occupancy. It's the easiest one. Same brand, but self-reported. So I don't have demand on this report. So occupancy, 2019, June. 4.9. Uh, yep. So June occupancy was 84.9 in 2019, and then in 2023. Yeah, it's it's down. So your occupancy would be seventy eight point four. But our supply is up. Supply is up, and the other thing too you have to look at with this particular one is you look at ADR because sometimes if hotels raise their prices too much, people say, "Oh, I'll stay in Williams." So that can happen too. So let's look at this real quick. So two thousand nineteen oh, wow. ADR, they were getting one nineteen, sorry, and they're getting one thirty nine this year. So that's a big reason for this indicator as to why you're seeing a difference. Um, you know, we don't we don't have a gate that that we can ticket people when they walk into Flagstaff. So it's very hard to say was 
demand up or down. We can look at it from a rooms perspective. We can look at it from them. It does look like June was down slightly from rooms side, but that's because they were charging 20 bucks a room more than they were in 19. That, that we affects also it. had more hotel rooms. We have more hotel market, rooms in the market. Also... Yeah. yeah, I mean, overall, if you look at demand for the year, the reports are showing it's up ever so slightly for the year over year. And for 2019, we could look at it. This report, I have to go into a different report. But so I don't, I don't think demand was down significantly, truthfully. Yeah. Grace, I have 19. You're what? I have 19. Oh, perfect. 19, you want 19 demand? Yeah, do demand for 19. And then I have demand for, oh, at least give us that. It, that's the, um, year 2019 yeah. um, okay. it was slightly up it looks like it was a number six one million three hundred seventy six two hundred twenty one okay again it was what please one million three hundred seventy six thousand two hundred twenty one and demand for this year was one million three three oh nine one seven so man so that is less yeah, and what was it? Where's the old number? Oh, up here. So that's a that's a seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's down ever so slightly, forty thousand. Forty thousand. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're seeing with most is that down just slightly. And I think to do want to mention that two thousand eighteen was a banner year. It was. Yeah. So it was the highest year on record in terms yeah. of, demand, but that's still what we did it. I was. Bony high. Would, Hi, I would just say too, really quickly, um, like in these kind of charts, they're really good for overall patterns, but there are so many variables with these charts, specifically this one that goes to specific tourism spots, that it could be that their marketing changed or that their offerings changed or that something, they tried something different and it worked or didn't work. So for, in my opinion, for like big patterns like this, like we're seeing such a huge difference uh, when you're like, could it be economy? Could it be weather? Could it be the people reporting the numbers? Um, like, I would say if this is, becomes like a concern that is more an action point to do a survey specifically about summer activity um, for people coming in to Flagstaff, um, because there are so many variables to charts like this with, um, you know, the, those variables not being counted into the graphs that you're seeing here, if that makes sense. It does. It's an imperfect science. Yeah. No, I was just, I just noticed the gap and I noticed that with 19 versus this past year. And I was just curious. What mm -hmm. were your sales? 19 to 23. Yeah. 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 I mean, comparably, I'm sure it's down. Yeah. Us. Another oh. imperfect thing that we could do is we could look at the BBB and then factor in a inflation and see what we get. The other thing to see. Yeah, easy to do too, you know, uh, and that could give you another imperfect yeah. number to look at. Yeah. I would say too that in all of the marketing courses that I've taken since the pandemic uh, and the things that I've attended is people are saying, you know, people keep saying go, getting back to 2019. So getting back to 2019 numbers and 2019, et cetera. But uh, the marketing landscape and the behavior of tourists have changed so, um, so much after the pandemic, post pandemic. Uh, not only that, but because of economy and a whole bunch of other stuff going on in the world um, that it's almost like 2019 is a good goal, but it's hard to reach that goal because everything that we do now is different than what we were doing in 2019 to get those numbers. If that sort of feedback makes sense as well. Oh, Heidi, you have your hand up. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't have my hand up, but I did write that. Um, just speaking of numbers, um, it, it is likely that the next couple of months are going to be down um, because of the now we're we're chasing snowmageddon last year where so many people were up here skiing and playing in the snow so um just you know i want everyone to be prepared that that is definitely going to be a, a big a big difference if we don't 
have the snowfall. Thank you. Yeah, then we always got I-17 in the mix. No, getting bad press because of all the construction. Da, da, da. It was closed when I was on my way here. What's that? It was just closed when I was walking over here. So. I-17 <laughs> Yeah, they can't come right now. Uh, yeah. Uh, not, nothing we can do about it. <laughs> no, but you know, the curve can be done. Um, all right, director and staff, I'll let you guys take it away. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, uh, Tourism Commission, thank you for letting us present today. Um, we're going to, we always, and we can mix these up. If you guys want to see certain things in these reports, let us know. Because we're, you know, always willing to do that. We'll hit the next slide. We, we have been putting the vision, mission, position on here. That is the current vision, mission, position. Our wish is to go every two years, so every other year, and sit with the entire commission to look at it again and say, hey, does it still make sense or not? Are there changes we need to make? So that'll happen probably in December of this year, because January will be two years. If you would, Ralph, are you can, in control? In control. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there's the vision, mission, position. We do, we forward it out. It's just a, just a reminder. We don't need to review it necessarily. Um, at this moment. Uh, okay, and next um, slide. So it's visitor services we're going to go to next. I do want to point out that I decided to give you guys the entire STAR report. So I just sent it to you so you can look at the whole thing, and if you have questions about it, you let me know. Absolutely love it. That's okay. my favorite report. I like it too. Well, it just helps too because now I'm not just taking what I think is important out of it, putting it up there and sort of isolating those one, those numbers without context for you. So that's why I did that. So I send those at, every time I get them, uh, I forward them once the report is done. It's usually on the 20th of the month, the month prior, but you're not going to see it up here for that reason. Jessica, take it away. <laughs> Chair, Commissioner. Um, all right. So, Visitor Center numbers for December. So, this is our our walk-ins, as you can see, we were to have an increase in our visitation over last December. Um, biggest chunk of that is over that holiday break area. We get, of course, a lot of people that are more familiar visitors. We talk to a lot of people, Phoenix, Southern California, Texas, that want to come and experience winter if they don't have much of that where they're from. Next slide. And then similar trend on our retail sales, um, took a quick look at kind of what what it is that's selling our little stuff is still like number one, the magnets, coasters, tiles, they put on their walls. And it's kind of nice to see in our top five, um, Dwayne Cole and yeah, one of our local Hopi artists, his stickers are in our top five selling and you know, stickers only four bucks or something a piece, but it's still getting that top mark is for a dollar amount. So. Nice to see that from my folders. Slide. And then in, we did the Snowflake Festival uh, in December. So that's our winter family fest. We've got, we had an art market. That's that middle picture there. We had a few different local artists tabling, selling stuff um, with holiday shoppers. We had Santa so people could get their pictures, give their wish lists to him. And then a lot of crafts. We do ornament making, cart making, that sort of thing. So that way the kids have something to do. And it marks the opening of Skate at the Station. And so that one, we've sort of seen the numbers on that going down, comparing. Phoenix is still the biggest user of that rink, followed by Flagstaff um, locals using it. But looking back to like when it was the busiest, we were around 1,200 people this season. At its busiest, it was more like 4,000 back in some of the prior years. So looking at that, we're kind of rethinking what we want to do. We haven't fully flushed that out, so I'll bring it back into a later meeting and kind of tell you future what we're going to do to activate that space in December. But we're just seeing that it was five years with the current rank. And I think that was sort of its life. And now it's time to track that down. It's it's <laughs> it is. So, so I can feel less bad about being mean. Yeah. We want you for your honesty. We don't we want you to be nice. <laughs> and then our next uh, big event is Flagstaff Chocolate Walk. So 
we have probably more now, but last I checked, we had 26 businesses signed up for that this year. Um, our goal is always 30. I think that we'll easily make that because we know there's likely yeses, but we maybe just haven't gotten in front of the corner manager. Takes a few tries sometimes to get the right person, but that's all right. And then thank you, Madam Chair. If you helped us with our charity selection, um, our panel still has till the end of today. So can't tell you who's going to be it yet, but um, we wanted to involve more of our partners in selecting so that way they have more of a kind of buy in to who it was participating, our chair, and our events lead. So we have a comment. Oh, yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Aslan said he would share um, an article. It says, I'll share this for what it's worth most relevant for airline travel, but a decent snapshot nonetheless. And he sent a link, so I'll share that with the um, commissioners. Cody, I see your hand up. Sorry, I just had a really quick question for some context um, for the skating rink. Uh, slide was the because I know that um, I'm new. <laughs> I know that the 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 point of it was really to increase um, is more sort of like an outreach, to like increase uh, like um, things to do and fun things for people that is low cost, that kind of thing. Am I correct in that um, summary? Like, yeah, that and giving them something winter related that's not right. weather dependent, because as we know, um, you can't rely on the weather to give you a winter activity. So that was sort of it. And to drive traffic off of 180 when it started, that was a big part of it, because that was when there was a lot of issues with some of the snow play areas that have since closed right. up 180 and snowball. So it's kind of multi purpose. Okay, thank you so much. Sorry for for being a little late to the game on that one. What was the um for this one was attendance the biggest like sort of success tracker that you had for um keeping a temperature on this or were there any like surveys on like enjoyment for the people that were there? That was both. I mean, the enjoyment was a big part of it. Not so much an official survey, but just talking I to our it. volunteers that were out there running it and that experience that folks were having. Great. OK, thank you so much. Yeah. Jessica, on um, the chocolate walk, you guys always sell out. We do. What, if anything, are you guys doing differently this year? Are you adding anything? Or? About the same this year. Yeah, yeah. it's um, Charlie uh, is her first year on the event, so she sort of just kind of picking it up. We did try some different stuff. We showed uh, Willy Wonka one year at the Orpheum. Uh, didn't have as many people show up to that as we had liked. Um, we had some other ideas, um, but we just kind of go on standard this year. She learns the process. I was just curious. Yeah. We're open to ideas though, so let me know. Got good idea yeah, for you next year. <laughs> you all want those. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> make you busy. They're going to give us a lot of work. But, you know, it's nice for February, you know, because like you said, it's slow. Uh -huh. It's like the dead time downtown is the dead time for us unless there's snow. So it's nice to get back to the traffic in downtown at that time. Awesome. Sure, do you guys have anything else for? All right. Thank you. Short and sweet. Well, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, uh, I'll reintroduce myself. My name is Ryan Randiazzo. I'm the newest one here. Um, still less than a month uh, with Discover Flagstaff. Um, I came from the Arizona Republic, and I'll be handling media relations, what, what they previously handled. So just today, I'll go over a couple highlights of uh, earned media that we got. The big one was the weather first pine cone drop. Um, that was really a result of the budget that you approved with our paid partnership with Arizona Family. And then they took that segment where they interviewed Sam um, and aired that during the regular newscast. So that was pretty fantastic. Um, some of my family members actually in the Valley mentioned seeing that one. Um, so the other really big one um, that helped a lot was Forbes. Uh, and this has a, sorry, if you could back up, thanks. Um, so Forbes with a you know total readership of more than 70 million listed the Weatherford's drop as one of the most and most unusual drops in the country. Um, so in that rain right before, so when people in the valley and, and driving markets would be thinking about coming up here, 
uh, pretty fantastic. It was in there with like, you know, the crawfish drop and the bologna drop in Pennsylvania. And you get clips from the money. You know, that's a bunch of bologna. Suffice to say, ours is pretty good. Yeah. Ours, ours sounded much more legitimate and much more like something you would want to attend than some of the other ones that were on there just because they're unusual to um, just to try and be polite about those ones. Um, but in the in the clips, look and do this. I mean, this was neat because there were like morning radio talk shows all around the country that picked this up. And you know, you ever listen to morning radio and hear them just read like listen to this. So Flagstaff got mentioned not only in Forbes, but kind of all over the country thanks to that. Uh, next slide, please. And then MSN uh, listed us as one of the main cities that you want to visit if you're driving uh, Chicago to Santa Monica. Um, and they have a readership of more than 100. 130 million. So uh, another pretty pretty key one. Glad that they mentioned us. And then along with Route 66, they mentioned a bunch of attractions, including bowls. So, you know, it was more than just flagstaffs on the route. It was, you know, a listing of things that you could do and see here. Snowball bowl were all mentioned in that story. Uh, 24 hours. Wow. <laughs> 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 Flagstaff. Oh, Flagstaff. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least it was correct. Uh, <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Okay, so looking ahead, um, we've got four journalists from Mexico here now. Um, we're just having a pretty good time. I think some of you participated in their uh, trip. Uh, they got to ski, um, got to see some attractions. Uh, next week, we've got a writer from Chicago showing up. Uh, in early February, we've got a writer from the UK. Uh, here to write about like walkable uh, urban areas in Arizona. Um, and I think we have a pretty good uh, set up for her. And then in late uh, February, there's a writer from Canada, uh, from a publication called Parents Canada coming to town. So um, pretty busy month. Um, we'll be working on updating the website content. Uh, and one of my big tasks is to uh, sort of reevaluate how we report these numbers to you. So, you know, for example, today we're reporting Forbes. That was a great story, no doubt. They have more than 70 million readers, but probably not all of those people read that particular story. So, one of my first duties is to survey other CDBs in the region and, and country and see how they really report these numbers so that we can give you something that's a little bit more concrete and meaningful. You know, I mean, we can say readership went up because MSN did the story and they, you know, have a lot of significant readership, but really what did we participate in? You know, what what did I do to get earned media um, for the market and um, just, just for more concrete numbers. Uh, also working on the Route 66 marketing plan. And uh, the former film commissioner had uh, met some location um, doubts at uh, London Focus, and I'll be following up with those. But this is for the film, so uh, I'll be following up with those leads that she generated on that trip. Um, as a matter of fact, we have a meeting tomorrow with two LA scouts. Um, one who was involved with Killers of the Flower Moon, so um, they were really interested. I was uh, happy to see them respond right away when I reached out and asked if they wanted to talk about five scouts. That's what's going on. Thank you. Commissioner, do you have questions? No. You're welcome. Thanks. We were there on your first day. Yeah. <laughs> He's entrenched. <laughs> <laughs> right. Madam Chair and Commissioners, Isabel Medellino, Creative Services, Social Media. Next slide, please. So uh, December was a little bit better than November so far in numbers. So we had a sharp increase of followers on our Facebook for Discover Flagstaff. People were very excited about the winter recreation map, as you can see it with that 58,000 in reach. Fantastic. Um, people were also excited for Flag to be nominated in HGTV's list for top 50 small towns to visit during the holidays. So with that, that got uh, 16,000 in reach. We also really push the DVA holiday events on our socials this month um, just to give them an extra boost and drive more people to those events. We could go to the next slide. Um, also, another very good positive month on our Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we are on track for 30,000 followers in the next two to three months, which is very exciting. Um, we posted three videos this month. Uh, we partnered with Pizza Patio, Len Canyon Coffee, and Flag Tag for some video promotions. We also had a few multiple uh, collaborative posts with some UGC. 
Um, people also enjoyed the winter rec map on Instagram. A lot of saves, a lot of reposts and sends. Um, Twitter is a little bit down. Uh, I feel like Twitter is a little bit on the dead side now, <laughs> if we're being honest. So not as much attention on there as on our other platforms. Um, for Flagstaff Local, we did do a campaign on our Instagram. Uh, it was the Five Days of Giving campaign. We partnered with Rainbows and Boutique in the Visitor Center. Um, another acts of giving kind of thing where they gave out flowers, we gave out stickers to the first 50 people who came by. I'd say it was relatively successful for Flagstaff Local. Next slide, please. And Flag Haps is averaging at about 35% open rate. Um, pretty normal, not too variable in this month. Next slide, please. And looking ahead, we just started our Then and Now campaign. Um, I believe you guys saw it at the retreat, so that was pretty cool. Um, so that's coming up. Excited for Beer Week. I have a few posts in mind that I've uh, started queuing. Also, I Heart Pluto Festival. Some posts have gone out for that already in December. Uh, sorry, January. <laughs> so you'll see those. Um, we also visited Arizona, and we did post a video today on that, which was very cool. It was my first time, but <laughs> very cool to see. Um, winter content and responsible visitation coming up, and I also forgot to include Valentine's Day. I'm going to do some Valentine's Day cards for our socials. So. Yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Does anyone have any questions for me? No? Very engaging. Yay! <laughs> I, have a, I actually have a quick question since we're oh, at the hi. beginning of the year. This is more of a curiosity. Sorry, I'm so vocal. I'm just, I want to know all of the things. No, um, please. <laughs> for, um, Congratulations on the success of those campaigns that I, I saw that winter um, activities campaign that was really clever. Uh, I am curious for uh, the election year. Is there any like effect to the growth strategy for social media? I know that there are projections for social media growth and engagement. Uh, does the uh, the fact that there is an election year coming up affect that strategy in any way or do you just sort of accommodate for it? If that question makes sense. Yeah, I I haven't seen much variables with the election years. Um, I feel like there, as you said, would be an increase in engagement on social media because of discourse and all that stuff around the elections. But um, social media is a beast that is always changing as well. So it's kind of hard to uh, track those kinds of things sometimes, but mm -hmm. does that give you an idea? Yes, thank you. Are you here to run vote for your favorite trail attraction or something? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that's something I could get excited about. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. Great right. idea. Yeah. Maybe a contest, perhaps? Another idea. contest? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good for a little job, you know, as long as it was fun. You know, Absolutely. that's something to actually be excited to vote for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we did vote for skin ribs or pork and something. We did the campaign signs and everything. And the day we launched them, we had our first COVID closure. So it was really nice. So I couldn't do that. But it was kind of, yeah, it's kind of the idea was that, hey, we're in a crummy time when everybody's angry. Let's put, let's have some. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, a, another good thing too that I've seen for social is to have an effort of um, like sort of like a good news campaign that you don't publicly tie to an election, but there are so many emotions during an election year that around those times of like tense things, those sort of posts tend to trend better than in other years. So um, just sort of like feel good things, feel good stories. Those will actually engage higher during times of election or political strife because people are looking for some positivity on their feed. Um, so I don't know if that's useful or not, but that could be like a fun idea for later. I don't mean to throw a wrench. I know I'm looking a few months ahead. I was just curious. No worries. Yeah, all these ideas are very good and I'll do my best to apply them. Thanks, Isabel. Okay, before we jump in uh, to the Marketing and Creative Services side, I've got two fast facts that occurred not necessarily in, well, not in December, but just this week. First, 
Have you heard about Pere? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, big deal. Big deal. <laughs> so James Beard, um, semi-finalist. Super, super cool. So thrilled again for our restaurant scene. It's just amazing. Happy for them. And then secondly, Air France announced that they will have a direct flight to Phoenix starting in May. So some good news for us as well, because France is definitely among our top international markets. All right, next slide, please. We're taking a look at Paid Digital. Uh, we delivered more than 734,000 impressions. A high-performing creative, the winner rec map. You guys, it's just kind of like a, a theme. So we've heard multiple team members talk about it. Uh, I'm here to share that it had a 0.26 click-through rate. Um, Taking a little bit of thunder away from next month's meeting. Yesterday, uh, Channel 3 aired a lifestyle segment uh, that was all things uh, winter recreation, stay and play responsibly, how to travel, uh, how to snow play, where to snow play, talked about recycling, uh, sustainability. It was a fabulous segment. And then also uh, January 23rd and 25th, along the same vein, um, there were what the station is called community billboards. They were on, they aired on channel three and channel five in the noon and 5 p.m. loses. So you can't get any better than that. Uh, Great Pinecone Drop had a 0.34 click-through rate. And while I haven't um, heard a consistent number, I have heard that this year's event definitely exceeded foot traffic compared to the year prior. So uh, great news there. And um, as grand as it gets, remember that's a creative that we are serving to the Southern California market at a 0.25 click-through rate. And the art on flag 365 had a 0.30 click-through rate. So for the month, the average uh, next slide, looking at our website, you all had an opportunity to review this. Uh, just a great trajectory there. Next, uh, let, me, let me pause here. Um, so domestic sessions increased 3.9% uh, by DMA. Um, Phoenix increased to 20,000. Uh, 355. Vegas increased 47%. San Diego increased um, from or to 1,227. Um, and LA increased 118%. Dallas increased. Chicago increased. And you know, looking at Chicago, we're going to see that DMA register a little bit more, especially as we're on the hills and I'm looking at you because of sports and, and um, what the hotel represents largely um, is spring training. And I've got such good news about, and I don't even have it on here. Um, we are, they bonused us. So if you go to cactusleague.com uh, homepage, uh, the first view are, I, I believe it's the each, there's several cards representing each of the teams that are training in Metro Phoenix. Right below that is a logo, and we're right next to it. And it, it's a click through. I mean, it's a premium position, you guys. Um, and then below that is our standard position, and our logo is there as well. Super, super nice. excited. Yeah. Um, also working on um, a blog that I'm going to pitch to them to put it on their site to drive for Express. So that's a little peek into, I got a little uh, filter there, but it's only because uh, you have to say it's around the corner. Um, page views, a good story here. Come on, 44% increase. Top landing pages, uh, webcam. Uh, plan your trip and the snowometer, uh, winter events and holiday increased, uh, dining and nightlife uh, had 2,142 sessions. It's a big jump. Uh, we had 159 newsletter opt-ins. And again, you know, it's three digits. It's so small. But truly, you guys got to figure that these people are asking to hear from us. And that's what Sabrina latches on to 
and pushes out her information. 100, 166 visitor guide requests and more than 4,200 outbound links to our partners. Good traction. Next slide, please. Things to do. Oh, maybe I'll look at that something different. All right. Engagement rate, um, some steady growth there just speaks volume in regards to the content that's on our page. Um, the team's working hard on optimizing the right content at the right time. That speaks to that. Uh, next slide, please. Things to do. Uh, good, um, good performance there. We're above 2022 and um, just shy of 2021. Next slide, please. Festivals, again, a good trajectory here as well. Next slide, please. Dining and nightlife. Um, we are we're we fight hard um, in this. We've got a lot of competition out there. Um, again, optimizing the right content. We've got a lot of work to do. And the fact that we uh, had Ray's announcement yesterday, and we haven't even done our work on that side with that kind of with that content. So um, we're looking for some more wins there. And I know Ryan's also on it as well. Uh, looking ahead, uh, Ralph created a new Arizona Beer Week video, and we'd like to share that with you. Hope the audio will work, especially for our team's participants. So let's give it a shot. I'm a leading craft beer kind of city. I don't need to brag, but people often tell me I'm refreshing. Maybe because of my eight award-winning breweries, or because of the ponderosa pontus trails, stargazing. Yep, I have all that too. Let's set a date. Pack your SUV, load up your friends. Oh yeah, and I'm cool with four-legged friends too. Crafting moments, crafting memories, crafting the finest bricks. Yep, that's me. Why is that? So unfortunately, we have some glitches. It's it was glitching quite a bit here, and I've, I've been noticing it when I progress slides. So unfortunately, it didn't place new. But you get the idea. Uh -huh. Really cute. Do you like really it? Really cute. Yeah. Okay. It's really, it really good. well done. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ralph. Um, thank you. Great job there. Um, so continuing to look ahead, uh, it's all about the winter recreation map again. And um, as Michael had mentioned earlier, we are on the heels of Arizona Beer Week. Uh, you've seen some publications uh, being passed around, lots of content, lots of attention around Beer Week. And I think Sabrina is going to share a little bit. She's got a, a sweet six up her sleeve to supporting that. And that's it for me. Any questions? Sorry, I was just going to say, uh, Terry sent Ellen and I her numbers for Panko. So it was 5,000 plus for the noon drop, 10,000 for the 10 p.m., and 12,000 for midnight. So it was her biggest. Um, Love it. Yeah, it, was, it was probably mm -hmm. midnight. It was so awesome. Yeah. They're using the drone mm -hmm. technique to kind of many people or, you know. I think you had information. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There, 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 there was a yeah. drone. Sitting yeah. back and forth and up and down the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that that event just doesn't get to the east side. And a lot of times if it does, it's pushing locals that oh, like going downtown and say, I'm gonna go over here tonight. So we're okay with that. It has an impression in the market. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this year was kind of a, I think the noon had some spillover for us in the afternoon. Uh, and having all those families and the closed streets. I mean, if anyone needs to convince Terry, you just close downtown and have them walking downtown and build a parking deck and make it magnificent. Because it was so much fun to walk into downtown. And once you got off the streets, it's just like, oh, wonder, this is lovely. Yeah. Good to hear. Um, I know we have some skin in the game in regard to encouraging people to move east and to move west. 
before the pine cone drop activity starts. So we, we do have um, some action there. Um, sounds like we can continue and try and push that out even a little bit more. Yeah, I, I think probably a lot of these said restaurants, we can probably do a better job with also saying, hey, come visit us before, you know, or the oh. noon after that, that sort of thing. Because if you go to the noon drop, you may not stick around uh, downtown for the entire time, right? Because yeah. it starts yeah. to get busier and busier. Mm -hmm. uh, also, yeah. Mm -hmm. or, you know? or, or we just need to drop a crawfish or something. We're passing it along to the, to Sabrina, perhaps. Or are you still doing one, or where are we? It, it is um, over to Sabrina. Okay, terrific. So real quick, Sabrina, I'm just going to jump in because I did the math on this. You had asked the question about June to June 19 to 23. So this is just another imperfect way to describe um, for the BBB collection. So in June of 2019, the BBB collection was 752,074, so 074. In June of 2023, the BBB collection was 1,089527. So I looked up the, the inflation for every year and I added it. Uh, so it was 1.23 and 20, it was 4.7 and 21, it was 8% in 22 and 3.4 and 23, based on this website that supposedly is expert on it. So if you add all of that up, it comes out to 889. Thousand, so the BBB collection was about one, about two million, or sorry, two hundred thousand dollars more in June for 2023. Are people spending more money, and it's the same amount of people? Is it more people in market that are day use that's not showing up on this other report for overnight visitation? So there's a lot of questions. Um, but if you add inflation to it, the BBB collection still outpaced. Is, well, I'm, I'm only going to poke one hole. Is yes. it's imperfection? Yeah. Our hospitality wages have exceeded, <laughs> have exceeded inflation. Sure. And I'm guessing, like most operators, myself included, have increased to more than that. So it, it yeah, it's just another imperfect number. To exactly. Yeah. yeah. See the picture. Is, and is there a way when we're is there a way moving forward that we can include that in any revenue numbers? I feel like I feel like that's a miss, right? Anywhere and everywhere these days. We need inflation in there because that's great looking from 750k to a million. Sure. Right. But it's irrelevant if we're not including, right? And yeah, this, it's this easy to add it. Yeah, this is a this is a conversation I think needs to be had on a bigger level with the city in general. Uh -huh. It's like we need to be including these numbers. Yeah, because as Michael said, I mean the cost of for a restaurant from 2019 now is 40 percent an increase in doing business. The cost of doing business that's outrageous. And there's not a 40 percent increase in visitors to right, that. Right, sorry. Well, yeah, also been a 40 percent increase in, in base prices. Yeah. So we can skin the cat a, a bunch of different ways. And any any info you want to see, we'll try to cobble it and show you where you could find it so you can verify those numbers. It it's all good. It won't change how this team operates. You know, we're still yeah. here to to get more people, the right people at the right time, no matter what that number shows us. So we're dog on a bone with that, no matter what. So it doesn't really change what we do. It's interesting information. It might change a conversation you have with someone at the city and we're happy to provide that for you um and yeah so that's i mean that's my answer there is and and in terms of bbb we don't really bring it up in this meeting uh, rarely you know what i mean it's it's there for anyone to look at what the bbb collection is um in terms of cost doing business we don't correlate the two because we're here to market and to get folks here and it's it's a little bit of apples and oranges but you know we're happy to do what you guys want us to do yeah i just i just think for from a reporting standpoint that we're not giving as full of a picture as we can be to the community and to and to the city and in general i mean i think that it's incredibly important now when we're looking at 19 right we have 
four years up there uh -huh. and any any sort of a revenue based report people are going oh that's great but how about inflation right they're looking at these numbers whether it be a member of the community or someone within within the city and the staff that's making decisions and i think it's just something that's, that's been incredibly looked over but especially now from 19 until now like i mean it, it's been a game changer in, in small business big business uh, but business in general yeah, if, if there's, I don't know, I just, just suggestion, if there's any sure. way that when we're reporting these numbers, even if it's an asterisk and says, oh, by the way, these numbers actually equal this. Okay. Um, or it's like, hey, these numbers include typical um, inflationary, you know, adjustments. Yeah. So what you're going to find on the web is not produced by us. We would have to go to Rick Tatter's group and say, hey, we had a request for an asterisk to say blah. So that all comes out of Rick Tatter's group. So, and yeah, we could be, yeah, any, any, any tax, any tax numbers. We don't do any of them. I just look at them. I tell you what they are. Um, so, and then in terms of like BBB, we normally don't uh, re uh, report on it, but we can, and we could add in the, that number if you guys want us to. Yeah. Does this affect you, Jessica, in your realm, the inflation? Uh, rates. It's yeah, it has gone up. So uh, the like a day meeting package, for example, or banquet menus have definitely increased as well. Um, and so that makes a difference if we're competing against another market or even Phoenix or the Valley, if their banquet prices are left. We're kind of at Scottsdale level now, I want to say, in competitiveness versus other markets. And we used to be, I mean, Scottsdale and Phoenix is the highest priced. And so that's kind of where we sit. So we do price some out of the market. Hotel rooms, it depends on the group. If it's an association, yes. If it's a big corporate company, probably not. Um, car clubs, different groups that are set with the budget military reunions, yes, um, the rates do. So it really is finding that balance for them and kind of figuring out, can they afford us or not afford us? And then educating them, can they push their dates or can they go midweek? It's kind of all those different little pieces that come in for the groups, because they're all so different with such different budgets. Well, and I think it too, like in overall is the concern among small businesses that they won't be able to survive. Flagstaff Blues and Brews is a great example of that. The increase in the cost to do that festival is no longer proven to do it. And so that's where I see Michael and Jamie worrying, how much longer can we survive in this market. So I get it doesn't change what you guys do, but if you guys are marketing black stuff, it does. Because what if we don't have like I I honestly think June's numbers will go down without blues. How does that affect then everything else? That will affect your budget because then there's less BBB. So it it does all kind of tie together. And that's where I think it's more of a big picture is seeing the smaller guys wondering Yes, you can say BBB increase, but Michael had to and Jamie had to increase their prices so much. Didn't mean more people came. They just had to spend more money to still come to their venue. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, totally get it. Hi, yes, sir. Hand up. Heidi. Hi, all. Sorry about my camera. I'm having trouble. I'm on my laptop. Um, we can definitely. Uh, Chair and Commissioner Thousand, we can definitely, Trace and I will make a meeting with our Management Services Director, Rick Tatter, and we will talk to him about that concern and see what he can do for us. Um, they definitely do not have the ability to give us real BBB numbers every month. They used to try to do that, and it was just really hard. Um, so normally we get things like on a quarterly basis or or actually just when we ask for them. So we'll work on trying to get you what you want to see. Um, I think the big thing is, and I know we're going to talk about this at some time, um, it's really important for us to all have the same understanding that although the BBB numbers look good, and I understand that they're in, they seem inflated because of the inflation, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I just want to make sure that we are all on the same page moving into this year and getting that renewal. Um, so I know we're going to have that conversation, I think, Trace, at your next month's meeting. 
So we're going to do our best to get you the information that you're looking for so that when we do have the renewal conversation, we're all on the same page. Um, but I think that's, I just wanted to set the expectation. They will not be able to do it monthly um, because a lot of times when I first became the CVB director, which was 11 and a half years ago, they used to give me BBB numbers every month and they were in, they were wrong. And it was because they were trying to take a stab at it. And I just said, that's not helping me. <laughs> so basically I said, I don't want them every month. Um, and then the person that was doing sales revenue, sales tax revenue had left and then we had transition. So right now, Rick Tatter is actually pulling double duty and doing that revenue director's position as well. So we'll see what we can do to, to get in front of Rick and, and get you what you need. And, you know, it would be helpful. You might want to actually write um, Trace or somebody an email asking specifically what you'd like us to talk to Rick about if there's other things as well so that we can just really get all of that taken care of in that one meeting. Um, I really appreciate this conversation. Thank you. And I, and I guess I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here. The, the, I'm, I'm assuming that other groups within the city use this data to make decisions, right? When they look at, do they use, they look at the BBB revenue. And so it's great for us. What I'm concerned about is we're all busy and we look at something, it's a snapshot. And they go, okay, that looks good. That, okay, great. I'm going to move on. It's having that data in front of the right people they can look and see that, hey, we're actually not up we're flat. Um, you, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, I want to make sure that the information that we're gathering that gets passed along to the other groups within that make decisions for the community are seeing apples to apples, right? That are seeing the, seeing that adjustment that, that is in there. Great for us, but for me personally, more important for those people making the decisions that truly understand what we're seeing here. That is, Many of us so adding inflation, adding like a line that says inflation would make it this. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. that's a great, that's a, a management services uh, accounting thing. And we'll talk to them. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what decisions exactly are being made based on that? They're usually budgetary, but those are real dollars. So I'm not sure it would change that. And other groups, I, I don't, I don't know. I can't give you a good answer for that. Rick might be able to. So we'll throw that into the mix. Yeah, the bottom line always wins with the sales tax, right? So if we raise our prices, everybody wins except yeah. the businesses yeah. involved. And we just want to make sure that that is out there. Or the guest People consumer and visitor that are then priced out of flag and go to yeah. Williams. Right. Yes, I mean, that's that's one of the long term. And that does affect what we do at this table on how we market and how we plan. Because if we lose our unique edge as our beautiful mountain town, with its diversity and independent operators. That's a really problem. That's a big, it's a big thing. I mean, if we got named as one of the best Christmas towns, you know, how long does that last if it's all the normal stores that you get in any other town in America, right? I mean, it's just, it's all, it is all connected and that's why this dash is important. Yeah. All right, well, we'll chat with him. We'll get back to you. And I interrupted you, Sabrina. No interruption at all. I agree. It's good conversation. Um, I just have a couple slides to go over email campaign numbers from December. So this first one you see here is for Flagstaff Local, uh, still reaching that audience of a little over 1500. I would like to see this number go up, so I'm going to start brainstorming some new ways to increase our reach during 2024. We did have a good open rate of 37%. This is surpassing the industry average benchmark. I would like to see this go up as well. Before we added some city staff, we were getting open rates of about 50%. So um, to have those numbers go down to about 40, uh, I, I would like to see that come back. We do still have a strong click-through rate though of 2.5. And the top clicks you can see below um, for December were the Sunshine Rescue Mission approved donation list landing page. Also, there was a link to our stay in place sweepstakes, though that's mostly outward facing. I did want to give a chance for our local community to enter to win as well. And then the giving machine that was um, held in the Heritage Square during the month of December and into January was also pretty popular among our readers. Um, also, as a reminder, these clicks um, 
are toward the bottom of our email. So it's really nice to see that our readers are engaged and actually going through a good majority of the content that is sent to them every month. Can we go to the next slide, please? Here is our Discover Flagstaff email reaching a little over 26,000 people. This received an open rate of 40% and a click-through rate of 1.2%. These are also surpassing those industry benchmarks, which we love to see, but because we're Flagstaff, we always want to aim to do bigger and better. Top clicks were also the stay and play sweepstakes, as well as our accommodations, which has been wildly popular for the last about nine months now. And just our Discover Flagstaff website onto the home page um, to go navigate as they please. So the emails were sent at a later time, both the Discover Flagstaff and the Flagstaff Local to experiment with some new send times to see what might perform better. Um, this decision was made after attending a webinar uh, produced by Constant Contact, who are experts in email campaigns, just recommending to play with our times because all of our audiences are different. So it's hard for them to pinpoint exactly when we should be sending what day and time. So these were later send times. This month of January, we did send earlier in the day and also scheduled for some weekend sends. So we always do one massive push to our database. Uh, and then subsequently, we do a resend to non-openers. So the resend to non-openers is occurring on Saturday this week. I want to see how that performs. They do have different categories when going through the reporting to let me know how each per each send performs. So I look forward to looping back with those results next month. Can we go to the next slide, please? So looking ahead, um, the second bullet point says email campaign strip style sending. I did talk about this a little bit at our retreat. I want everyone to know that we sent out our first strip style send for the Discover Flagstaff email today. So what that means is when our audience clicks on various links, they will be relocated into additional audience lists. So if they're interested in the outdoor content, they'll receive more of that. If they're interested in the dining content, they'll receive more of that and so on. So I set up all the click segmentation and next week I can send out those drips and see how those perform. So excited to report on that as well. Uh, further looking ahead, spring website updates. Lori touched on spring training. That is definitely included and in the works. We also have our Route 66 centennial planning. There was Route 66 content included in our Discover Flagstaff email that went out today as sort of a teaser to let our audience know to keep an eye out for more information coming soon, also to increase that open rate and click-through rate. Um, of course, festival season is right around the corner, so sending out some invites very soon to our festival organizers for Tuesday, February 20th. Also, our sweepstakes, the winner stay and play that I mentioned, was pretty popular in our email campaigns. That is concluding next Monday. So I will have some numbers for that next month. And then on February 1st, we start our Beer Week sweepstakes, which we have an amazing prize package, uh, very, very generous brewery donations. Michael Marquez, Mother Road included. Thank you so much. Uh, so very. Oh, no, <laughs> well, we appreciate your guys' partnership always. So uh, looking forward to see the results of our Beer Week sweepstakes because it's an amazing prize package and we've included that value on the graphics. I don't know if Jen Schauber is in this meeting, but she did an amazing job on the graphics. So thank you, Jen. Um, and that's what I have cooking. So thank you so much. Are there any questions? You mean that's what you have brewing? <laughs> oh, haha, ha. love it. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. 
Um, and Heidi put in the chat that she's already set up a meeting with Rick for <clears throat> 2 13. So we will get back to you next month at this meeting or sooner. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Tourism Commission Chair, Vice Chair, Commissioners, thank you for letting us present. Are there any additional questions or comments? No. So, uh, so next, any new agenda items that you guys would like to see for February? If we can, the BBB numbers that you had talked about. Anything else? Hopefully we can get our restaurant folk wrangled together. I have, a, I have a question, and again, this could be reflective of my newness here, so sorry if it's out of pocket, but I am curious, uh, is there any interest in this group hearing of Lowell's plans and strategies for the ADC and some updates about its opening um, and the, the things that we're doing with the city to make it a an astrotourism destination? Is there is there any um need from this group to hear more about that or more about our projections of visitation numbers i, I can just speak for discover flagstaff and yes and yes again um yeah i know we're doing a lot on the back end but it's nice as a group to discuss it it is kind of the you know the biggest thing happening right now is that adc opening but i'll turn it over to the commission yeah i think that makes great sense okay. more information the better so we would okay. love that. Maybe um, could could there be a presentation in uh, February and then uh, subsequent months that make sense for you when you have notable uh, milestones met? Yes, that makes sense. I have um, some KPIs where we're going to be tracking success for national and international PR. Um, and as you know, you know, Flagstaff's a big part of that because we're marketing the entire destination. Um, so I can present some forecast numbers and some goals that we have. And uh, in general, I'll be happy to give some an overview for those who don't know some of the details since our big PR push doesn't start until March. Uh, however much information you'd like, I would be happy to supply it. There are also some things that we're doing that I think will benefit the commission that you know, a few of us have talked about, but uh, specifically audience uh, and tourism, uh, you know, uh, psychographic surveys that we're working with contractors and PR agencies on that I think would be useful for all businesses here as well. Okay, so Commissioner Half Moon, uh, we'll put you on the schedule for a report in February. And then after that report, we'll ask you when you'd like to report again, because I assume it wouldn't be every month, but you are welcome to do that. If you think that's okay. important. Sure, great. Yeah, I will. Um, let's start with that first presentation, and I would love you y'all's you know feedback on if this was useful and what what further information might be useful as far as updates as we as we get to those points. Thank you, Cody. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to see some spring training creative in February mm -hmm. to see what you guys are working on before it actually happens? Absolutely. Um, Ralph, do we want to show? We'll just have a short yeah. no. uh -huh. no. <laughs> This is a friendly testing ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in this room. Ralph just needs a little short stop to find it. Uh, <laughs> and then maybe to a, a recap of the chocolate walk. Your week, if you have, you can give us. We'll be in the middle of it. Yeah. We'll be smart. Yeah, yeah, we can show right beer week it. right now as well as um, we can show beer week digital. We just like to see this stuff. So let's do it. Let's go. It sounds like a whole room. Wow. Really good. <laughs> I'm just going to hang out here in the left field. <laughs> oh my God. So, 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 so bad. I can't stop. 
Here we we want to show like data files, mistakes, things like that. Yeah, I'd love to show. Yeah, I just saw this this morning. It's, um, yeah, so we could do. Um, this is sweet stakes. This is being delivered um, to the Arizona market. And right, the computer's beach ball was spinning. <laughs> <laughs> it's a curveball. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I need to also share this on Teams. Hey, Terry, it's Heidi. Heidi, 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 Heidi. <laughs> um, while Ralph's looking that up, will you remind me what the parking arrangement is for commissioners that come to meetings? Um, I know there are designated parking spaces in front of City Hall that commissioners can use um, for commission meetings. Did you guys get, I thought I sent out that information before, but if not, I can send it out again so you don't have to pay for Yes. You and he's gonna go home. And and if you if you park in the parking lot across from um City Hall, the we call it the Wheeler Park parking lot. Um and you see all the cars that are parked on the one side versus the other side, we definitely want you to park on the side with all the cars. If if it, by chance there was something that happened where you were you received a warning or a ticket, please just send it to me. Or let me know and I'll let Park Flag know, but you definitely do not need to pay for parking when you come to City Hall for these meetings. Thanks. Is that good anytime we come? I got a couple six packs. We go, we go post up down in the uh, lobby. You know. I can take no bribes, but thank you. <laughs> if we drink them, there's no evidence. <laughs> So this particular creative, um, Ralph, I'm sure you're working on making it bigger. This is a carousel approach. So the viewer will be served an ad and then they get to scroll. And we took this approach to be more comprehensive of uh, the award-winning product in town. And again, giving uh, the user the opportunity to really dig in and get motivated to get up here and spend more than one night. So again, the beers pair with an attraction. So hopefully they'll be motivated to say, oh my gosh, I haven't been to the Grand Canyon in a while. Oh my gosh, I haven't been to Bowl Observatory in a while. And, and so on. So it's the scroll effect. Cool. And um, the copy points are very similar to what you've seen in uh, the other creative that we've pushed out. That's great, that's thematic and, and cross. Platforms. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Um, here is the sweepstakes ad, and again, this sweepstakes ad is um, well, it is being pushed out with Gate Media, and it is only in the Arizona market. <laughs> Whereas, uh, I believe the other ads are farther reaching than just Arizona. Um, I, I got to tell you. This this creative was some work, and um, I'm not saying the other creative wasn't work, um, but to tone this down and get across some some motivating messages, it took took some time. Jen did a really, I think she's done a great job with that. It's really hey, fun. Lori, what about uh, showing some beer in this? <laughs> so we had beer in the first approach, and Heidi, it's there's it's just too much. There's you got to remember how tiny these ads are. Um, it, it was very, very tough. All right. Well, if Michael says it's OK, then I say it's OK. But if Michael doesn't like it, then we need to change it. <laughs> no yeah, yeah. And one of the hardest things we've had with social media is I love AI when it works. <laughs> um, we have been getting rejections on even job postings because they mentioned beer brewery. Uh, so 
that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes having the beer will kick, especially Instagram is just my favorite friend right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So how do you feel about this approach right now? Um, I, I mean, I like the slider. Uh, it would be fun to have a pint or something or a leading craft beer city in there again. Um, something, something fun because just flag and hops. Uh, if you're not a beer drinker, you may not know what that's referring to. That's the only thing without a beer, without something to tag it to beer, whether it's a can, a pint glass of something, a fermenter, whatever. Um, it might be missed because it's almost that fifties look. And it makes me think of sock hop. So that's just that's just me. Okay. I'm not a I'm not a creative guy. I leave it to you guys that are much more brilliant. But Michael and I are right, and so is Cody. So I think we might want to consider it. <laughs> Thank you. It's really busy, and then when you sprinkle in when you sprinkle in the additional like that doesn't the winter one, and I also entered to win. So just saying, pick me. <laughs> um, but I, if like you saw it, it was winter. You went to click on it. This, I like, I would have like it wouldn't. It, I wouldn't be engaged enough to be like, what is that? Because on? because there's that iconic person on an inner tube mm -hmm. coming down, yes. and it's instance like it's snow. No, that is. Can you put it around the and or in the and area? <laughs> the gender. Yeah. I mean, this is a digital display. Yeah, these, yeah. Are, these are like this big. Yeah. On your phone, you know, so it's rough it's to try to get everything on there. And if you put it by hand, that beer can's gonna be this big. You know, is the, the sweepstake price valued at is that really important? Yeah. Or beer, no. the, yeah. You know, no. Yeah. Oh no, I see. I think it is because when people see they have a chance to win, but you just don't know what you're winning by looking at that. But it's eight hundred dollars. <laughs> they click on it. It's a carrot. Them. Yeah, it's a carrot. So. You know what, though? You know, could you do two versions? And I was just going to say, see what you want. Yeah. Yeah. We can maybe test. Yeah. Mike and I were right there. Yeah. We can, we can maybe test. I said it first. Oh. <laughs> is, is that, did you hear something from a rover? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, that. That'd be fun. I think it would be really fun. Cody had a, had a chat. Um, Comment says no. Mother Road is doing another Lowell focus brew and can design this year based on Sykes Brothers, who had a shop downtown and built the Clark and Pluto domes. And then agree about the beer, maybe some illustration in the background blue area. Okay, we'll do an A B. I think that's I think that's a great idea. idea. In a beer? Like that words are floating in a beer, you know. Like, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Lori, that wasn't trying to be a troublemaker, but I will tell you when um, someone, people like us, see it for the first time, and we give that recommendation, you guys definitely can fit something in there. So please try to. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll do. We'll be yeah. tested. Do, yeah, for you, we can we can come down and uh, we can have some of the imperial stout to get the creative juices. I'm on the road stab, not the cities. <laughs> Working after 5 p.m., we can make that one. <laughs> the overtime, we're, we're yeah. taking care of it. We just like being able to engage in this sort of stuff. Or I, we will make it happen. Okay. Yeah. This was fun to see. I love Before it. Before we see it here. Yeah. And I. Well I okay. want to apologize to, to Cody. Thank you for reminding me, makers and vendors, and we're celebrating uh, the history of the Sykes brothers and that telescopes could be built by bicycle manufacturers. That's how Flagstaff rolls with all its creative technology. Okay, we're a little more innovative today, whether it's turbines or stints or whatever we're producing, but I think it's cool to show that we have a hundred year history of makers and vendors. What kind of beer will it be? Um, it is actually going to be a uh, black lager. Oh. But we have a stash of some Whiskey Del Bach out of Tucson barrels that we have put an Imperial Porter in. We're going to put a little bit of that Imperial Porter to make this kind of a little winter warmer, but keep it nice and light for folks that uh, don't go for the heavy beers. Should be quite tasty. Okay. It's a must. Do you want to um, show Cactus League? I don't know. Oh. Uh, Cactus League is in, uh, 
yeah, it, we're, it's as grand as it gets. It's um, the Grand Canyon with the father daughter uh, baseball. I don't see Jen. I don't see the 24 folder yet. I don't see Jen on the call anymore. Yes. Very well, Ralph was trying to look. Um, Cody gave a plot. Um, Vice Mayor Aslan also said Mr. Lowell should do a Schumacher swatch beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Schumacher beer. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually this. That's the style here. So. The shorts. Mm -hmm. Is that the blood? It's a blood lover, yeah. Okay. And it's a fun connection also to Diana Gabaldon, who's the great granddaughter of the Syke, one of the Sykes brothers, who is our um, keynote speaker for the Night of Discovery at the Orpheum. So there's a lot of Flagstaff lore that's been injected into this year's programming, which is exciting. That's cute. Good. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> This is pre arrival. Oh, that's super cute. Oh. Yeah. And again, you know, the, the scenic here, the attraction here is that you guys have heard um, that research shows that it's national parks and monuments that they add to their itinerary. And you know, there's no better place. Yeah, it's just not. So there's no reason why that isn't going to drive freshman park. It's a great slide. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. I mean, I'm sorry, Heidi made more work for you, but. <laughs> no, but you know, no, I love the idea of an AB test. Um, yes. Hopefully, right? Yeah. Hopefully, the AB test is really to prove that you'll be wrong, which is what Heidi wants. <laughs> <laughs> we hey, see. Jennifer, well, they're so it. used to me. I know. <laughs> There's they know better. Don't so don't show me something if you don't think it's gonna get changed. So, <laughs> so. It's, it's it's a shame Ray Charles isn't your boss. <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> That's funny stuff. So there's a sneak peek, and if you're going forward and please hold me accountable. I made a note, and I remember at one time I did show more looking ahead, and yeah, so we're good. Um, but team two, if you guys can hold me accountable, that we always show upcoming digital um, and print for that matter. Um, but you guys did get to see that before we yes. went to print. So uh, anyway, consider it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Anything else that you'd like to say? No? Everybody good? We got all the notes. Okay. Then we will adjourn. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, ladies. Thanks, Thanks Tom. See what happened? The miracles happen. <laughs> Don't play a lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, friends. Bye, Cody. Bye.